Hallo, hallo wie uh, It's uh, going to be one so good afternoon. And today I come out with a video related to RTC circuitry. And I'll also explain the importance of the RTC circuitry. I'll explain with the circuit and the circuit board both. It is common circuit which is available for the laptop and the desktop. Controlled by the South Bridge, the RTC section resides in the South Bridge. And some few components you will be able to see in the circuit diagram which are there externally available out. And you can really play with those. Uh, a very important circuitry because if that section is not working or not getting triggered, your board doesn't switch us on. So that is the importance of the circuitry. We all play with the power sections, this, that, blah, blah, blah. But uh, this is some very, very typical important section you will find that doesn't work out until unless it's getting triggered out. So, hope you will enjoy with this particular video. And uh, if you really love the video, do subscribe it and uh, help and inspire me to come up with more videos. Uh, to help out the chip level uh, world of this uh, laptop and desktop. And uh, happy viewing. Go to the circuit. Thank you. Uh, the very very important circuitry that is nothing but we call it as a RTC circuitry uh, the real-time clock circuitry in the motherboard you might have generally seen this sort of button battery a small crystal which is a 32767 uh, 32768 Hz and obviously this all thing gets connected to our south bridge that is nothing but the ICH and a small piece of jumper, sometimes it's a 3 pin, then sometimes it is a 2 pin, uh, which is called as a CMOS clear jumper. Now, uh, let me come down to the circuitry part of it. Uh, now, this is the circuit of the RTC, RTC circuitry. This is the part, you can see some of the 5 signals nothing but the voltage of the RTC this is the crystal these are the two points where the crystals are connected to the uh, straight to the south bridge these all points one two three four and five these all points are nothing but which gets connected to the south bridge now this is nothing but the V bias and this is V SS RTC that is nothing but the ground or the negative now as far as uh, driving the power supply that is the VCC of the RTC has been done by two sources because we know that uh, many a time we say I like, don't use the computer desktop and the laptop. The circuit is absolutely common as far as my desktop and the laptop is concerned and very very vital circuitry because most of the desktop and the laptop it doesn't work if my battery voltage goes Uh, very very important and uh, to explain you said so there are two power sources for this one which comes out from our desktop or laptop or street power which from a maybe a regulator or in case of a desktop you might have seen that it also comes out from uh, the standby power supply 3.3 volt or it can also come from the orange color wire which is straight away a 3.3 volt which comes out from the SMPs so, so this is that voltage and uh, we have a battery too, a battery, a 3.2 volt lithium uh, battery, RS32, uh, I think it is 2032 battery. So the same battery is uh, this, this is the positive side of it, this is the negative side which is connected to the ground. And uh, we'll see two diodes on both the ends, that is from the thing, the supply which is coming from the main source. And the supply which is coming out from the uh, what do you call battery source, both are connected to the uh, diodes. 
now these diodes are not uh, silicon diode they are the germanium diodes because uh, we know that uh, the difference between the germanium and the silicon is the barrier voltage the barrier voltage of a silicon is quite high that is approximately 0 0.7 and the barrier voltage of germanium is low that is uh, approximately i think it's 0 0.2 so uh, we use a germanium because uh, we don't want a much of loss as far as the voltage is concerned so whether it is from the VCC, uh, whether it is coming from the main source, so a, a drop of approximately 0.2 is getting consumed up and 3.1 volt is getting formed in this particular line which is just goes straight to the VCC RTC. And similarly, when the main source is there, the battery is kept off, that is the battery is not getting consumed. And when the main source goes off, automatically the battery changes over. Now I think you know this sort of small change over circuitry which you can really experiment in your small uh, uh, breadboards uh, using two diodes and also on having two sources of power and one load. Now we also use you can see a one kilo ohms resistance just to keep uh, below the main source voltage because once there is a 3.1 volt over here I don't want the battery should work out because uh, diode we know the, it can flow only and when the voltage is lower on the other side. So, so this is the uh, way of uh, using the circuit and you can see one more important component that is nothing but one, one microfarad capacitor. Now this is uh, practically been used out there are many times uh, say like generally people uh, change up the battery uh, by putting off the system. But the main rule or the if you understand electronics, the main rule is uh, while working, if you remove the battery and replace the batteries as the best because uh, you can understand the batteries in that moment is not been used out. So anyhow, there is a capacitor. Uh, so even the system is off and you are replacing the battery, nothing happens out because the power consumption of this particular RTC circuitry is so less that uh, you cannot measure it in your normal multimeters. So to tell you that how much uh, can be the uh, power consumption of this particular uh, VCC RTC circuitry, it's a CMOS circuitry. So just to let you know, it is around 5 microampere to maybe 25 microampere is the extreme consumption of this microampere it is not ampere or a milliampere so therefore as I said you that you won't be able to measure it in your normal multimeters uh, you require a specialized multimeter maybe UT70B sort of multimeters which can really measure out this uh, micro ampere uh, current now uh, there are two more points in this circuitry. You can see a very, very important uh, part that is nothing but this crystal. And the crystal is 32768 hertz and it is all over universal. That is, whether you whether you have a, your wrist watch, which is a digital wrist watch working with a battery, or whether it's your mobile, whether it is your iPad, and whatever the devices which has a clock. And the crystal what we use is nothing but a 32768 hertz crystal and uh, the wonder part is you can replace it from any board maybe from a uh, Pentium 1 to Pentium 4 and a Pentium 4 to Pentium 1 this is a component which you can use it up uh, practically from any board you don't require up uh, anything any specialized crystal for maybe uh, a laptop or a desktop or something yes in case of uh, laptops and all we use the SMD versions of those uh, crystals, but uh, if required, you can really place up a crystal from the desktop also. There is no harm in it if the uh, space and everything is getting provided up. Now, anywhere we add a crystal, it's a very important that we have to use the decoupling capacitors towards the ground. So we are using a 12.5 PF capacitors which are connected from both the ends of the crystal and they are grounded up. This is the decoupling procedure of the crystal. This is an important aspect and one more uh, these are the very wherever you use crystal you will find this is a very common concept that you use a around 8.2 or 8.7 or 10 meg mostly very commonly we use a 10 meg resistance which is uh, very parallel to your crystal 
and these two points, the RTC X1 and RTC X2 are nothing but the two points of your south bridge which goes to your south bridge and uh, that, that is the place where your real the RTC clock works out and the RTC section resides in your uh, south bridge. So externally if you find there's nothing but the power supply sourcing, the crystal, the decouplings of the crystals and uh, a V bias. Now what is a V bias? Now the importance of this particular V bias pin uh, is nothing but uh, it is a sort of a trigger. Now we know uh, any oscillator in this universe they require something two things two very important things and uh, they are nothing but the feedback and the trigger that is the kick so this is the kicking point of the uh, this RTC V bias so how does it comes out there are two three procedures some motherboard they use it from this point that is from the battery point from the battery they give a resistance to drop it out then they use a capacitor now, use of capacitor in series with the power, you know that uh, a capacitor doesn't pass out DC. So, it is only uh, for fraction of second will a pass will be there uh, only and when the batteries, you, you have removed the battery and you are replacing the battery, only then the trigger will work out because the RTC is working throughout the span, whether your desktop or laptop is switched off or switched on, doesn't matter sir, because it is continuously working out. So, so this is the capacitor, so which uh, blocks the DC actually, and it's used only for the trigger. So during the charging process of the capacitor, only the supply goes off, and that is for fraction of seconds, and that is how the RTC gets a trigger, and the RTC starts working. Sometimes the circuitry in some of the motherboards, in laptop and desktop, you'll find instead of taking it from the battery source, they also take it from the main source, main. Uh, VCC RTC line. So it's up to you that how you want to take it out and its design is uh, concept how they design it out. Now this is as far as my circuit is concerned. Now if I show you something more this is nothing but uh, the physical uh, part. This line this line is nothing but which is connected from the positive line and uh, this is the small uh, regulator not the regulator, the two diodes, it's a package format, it's a what do you call a full wave diode sort of package, so it's a package diode uh, which uh, we use one side, so this is the power supply which comes in, it goes to this 102, this is nothing but the 1k resistance and then it goes out to this point and this is the point from where it comes out from the main power supply, from the main power supply, so this is the track which comes out from the main power supply. Uh, this is the place from where it goes to the RTC section. While going to the RTC section, it goes through a jumper. So this pin is directly connected to this jumper and the reason for this is sometimes there are cases we have to clear the CMOS, uh, CMOS uh, storage and this uh, RTC clock and on so on. So if you just ground out this, uh, this pin, so then what happens out your automatically whatever the uh, date and the time and the CMOS uh, whatever the things are there the informations are there they get lost and you have to reset it up uh, newly and uh, rework it out so this is for the CMOS clear and this is the RTC crystal you can see the 32768 Hz crystal these are the two legs of the crystal and you can see the two decoupling capacitors these are the two decoupling capacitors and this is nothing but the the one, uh, 106, the 10, uh, 10 meg resistance. Uh, these are the connections which goes out. One and two are the two connections which goes out to your uh, south bridge internally. It's in the form of a BGA and it goes out internally. Now, uh, you might be saying that why I'm talking about this RTC? Because RTC is one of the very, very important, uh, what do you call circuitry, a very small circuit. Uh, there's hardly any very few components externally available out but most of the motherboard they don't start if the battery voltage if this battery voltage goes below maybe approximately 2.5 2.6 volt so and uh, there are cases maybe sometime you'll find that the date and the time is moving fast or slow so in that cases you have to change the crystal simply and uh, in some of the cases you will find that uh, 
maybe the display is not coming out uh, the display is not coming out everything is okay the battery voltage and everything is okay you will find most of the cases this uh, decoupling capacitors and maybe the 106 resistance you have to change it out uh, to bring down the display uh, sometime if you find that your board is not working out uh, maybe take some tweezer or something put it on in the on procedures you know the on procedures of a laptop and the desktops and all so put it on from the power on uh, points and just touch up these uh, two pins the two pins the two legs of the rtc with maybe some tweezer or screwdriver uh, metal part and uh, you just uh, touch it and put it on you find the display comes out so this is the reason that uh, the rtc circuitry is not triggering up on the south bridge and until unless the rtc circuit gets triggered the uh, board will not be able to start out now this uh, VIP circuit, a very small and VIP circuit, uh, is a very very powerful. Uh, anyhow, everything cannot be explained up to in this particular small lecture. And uh, if you have any problem related to this uh, particular video, or maybe have some require some more query or something, do ring me up um, or mail me up. Whatever the things are, I'll just. Uh, front and the back you will find my telephone number and email address everything and uh, please subscribe the video um, your subscriptions gives an energy to me to make more videos like this and help uh, the world with the chip level repair that's all thank you thank you so much